Hey everybody, welcome back to the 815 Sports Podcast. Drew and Jake along with us tonight. Uh, Drew's basically becoming a regular guest now. Um, tonight on tonight's episode, we're just going to talk about the Cubs. Uh, we're going to talk about how the starters have been phenomenal. Um, we're going to bring up the bullpen, especially Adbert, uh, Jake's favorite pitcher of all time. <laughs> um, we might talk about Ian Feeble Hap, and we got Pittsburgh up next. Uh, Paul Skeens will be pitching this weekend, and hopefully they show Livy Dunn on the screen a lot. Um, <laughs> to get going, we're gonna we're gonna kick it off the three and three homestand. Not the greatest, but not the worst. You you beat the Brewers two out of three, which is pretty good, but you lose two or three to the Padres. Uh, you blow one of those games, more or less, which we've become accustomed to at this point with blowing games. Um, Drew, I let you get started here with how you felt about the homestand. Uh, I mean, the offense is a problem. So is the bullpen, but the starting pitching's the good takeaway, I'd say. So with what you've seen from the starters, obviously from the pen, um, obviously Cody came back, which is nice. Say will be coming back, starting to get a little bit more healthy. You think once the bats come back that we'll start seeing more wins, maybe less blown games? I mean, I'd hope so. I mean, they blew that game against Milwaukee last Friday, but, I mean, it was one nothing. I mean, yeah, if you I actually could hit the fucking ball – I mean, you'd be able not. You don't want a bad inning, but that three run eighth inning might not have killed you yeah. if you had runs on the. Board. I don't think I the the one nothing games that they blow don't irritate me as much as the games where they blow when they're up mul- multiple runs, right? Mm-hmm. One nothing lead in baseball is not good. It's not that's not a lead you want to have. Sure, you'd rather be winning one nothing, but yeah, it's so easy to come back from one nothing. The game that irritates me is up five to two in New York. Versus the Mets, the eight nothing loss in San Diego. Um, I guess that one game versus Miami at home where they were winning the whole time, and they blew it in the ninth. That was a one run game too. Though. Was that a one run game? It was like two one, and then they got two in the ninth. That one irritated me just because it was at home. But you're gonna you're gonna blow a one nothing games. You're gonna blow three two games. You know what I mean? You're you're not. They're not gonna be perfect. But the multiple run leads is what irritates me because your your bullpen can't even come in and get you one out. Um, and, but it's not overall, it's not a bad homestand. I think you had some big moments. The the thing with this Cubs, this Cubs team that scares me is I feel like they're too reliant on the home run ball. And I don't like that at all because we had that problem with the teams that Joe Madden had. They were either home run or bust. Um, and early on this year, they were scoring runs when they weren't hitting the home run ball. So they got to get back to that. Yeah. But I think the tough thing, though, like the bullpen's obviously been bad. And I've seen some people on Twitter not too happy about last Friday with the bullpen management. But they had a four-game series in New York. The last game was, what, 11 innings? I mean, What's he supposed to do? They used a lot. All they had out of the bullpen that day was – Elzelai, Leiter, Brewer, who's worse than Elzelai, arguably, and then Leiter. And it's, you were saving him for the ninth. You want Leiter for the ninth. So I kind of understand the thought process of giving Elzelai the eighth, but he is not working out. And that I wouldn't put that on council because right. he has changed his role. Like if you're down three or four runs in the in the eighth inning, that's a guy you use because you want realistically, to realistically, you're probably not going to win that game. So you don't want to burn a good reliever. For what? No, you want to build all Elsley back up. So in order for him to be built back up, he needs to be put in when they're not high leverage situations. So when you're down three or four, or maybe you're up three or four, but I don't even know if you can trust him when you're up three or four, to be honest. I'd rather just pitch him because, when you're down. But in all honesty, he should be trusted if we're up three or four runs to at least get out of that inning with still leading after it. And he can't. He can't do anything. Then the other thing I didn't really understand – was Monday night when it was – what was it? Monday – oh, 0-0 zero, zero when Steele pitched. And oh. they pulled him, which I get it. It's yeah. first start. And then you bring in Love Lady to face – and the only reason he's on the team is because, I mean, you need one left-hander in your pool. To get lefties I mean. out, I guess. And they brought him in to face uh, Arez, the lefty leadoff yeah, hitter. He got he's... He got the one out. The inning's over. I don't understand why he went back out. Maybe – Trying to get one more, but that was Ben Brown's start day. It yeah. would have been his day to start if Steele wasn't back. Like I would have used want Ben him, Brown right away. But like, do they want him to be a 
eventually a closer or like a two inning guy or like do they want him to be a long relief guy like Mike Montgomery or Travis Wood like what is his role going to be out of the bullpen I don't think they know yeah and that's the thing and I think that was a perfect opportunity to put Ben Brown in I mean he's been pretty good yeah this whole starting this whole starting rotation has been excellent yeah but phenomenal uh, to be honest since April nineteenth, it's two. Their ERA is two point one nine, best in the MLB. I mean, that whole Milwaukee series, all three of our starters gave up zero runs. Yeah, they went they went four or five straight starts without giving up any runs. Starters. So, and I think, no, that no, I mean, that's that's not right. I was gonna say I think Caden Wisniewski was the first one to do it, but because he I, only I'm, gave I'm up Anaga, three. That's a pretty I'm good Anaga start. Ended up giving up two, which. In the eighth, I, I, well, Steel gave up zero on Monday, but yeah. he didn't make it through five, so that technically yeah. isn't a quality because there start, was two outs. So I don't right, think it counts. Yeah, you got to get through the fifth. He came out with two outs, but and then Imanaga gave up with gave up two in the eighth. Which, that was still a great game, though. Oh yeah, no one's upset about that. But I I don't know why. He was called upon to come out in the eighth. It, almost like I didn't know why Dylan Cease came back out yesterday. Well, in the set, was it the seventh or the eighth when he had like a hundred and eight pitches? I kind of got an idea of both. Which one do you want to start with? Because the Imanaga one is really just one simple answer. It's he bullpen. don't have the bullpen. He doesn't trust the bullpen. And he only had ninety. I mean, and I think he sent Cease out there because I don't know. Maybe they have an off day coming up. Maybe. I mean, he was only at, I think. But, the, it, but if that's how Mike Schultz is going to manage this Padres team. Oh, I know. He, 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 I'm not saying it's you right. Can't, I mean, there's a reason they're 20 and 20 with all this talent. Is this what he's doing? Is he abusing his starters? They don't so really they, have as much talent, though. I think they because they sold off Soto. I mean, I don't really think. I think they're trying to just trying to well, stay Do you think their lineup's but, better than the Cubs? That's uh, close. I don't think their rotation's better than the Cubs. No, and I don't think they're both. I think both bullpens are pro- are a problem, and that may be the argument for even season because I mean they've already because their starter on Monday night didn't go or I don't know how long or Darvish Darvish went and yeah they got well, six but the, and their their bullpen tried blowing it Tuesday though uh, the Tuesday the game we won their starter didn't make it out of the fifth inning no but so, Monday the, the Cubs, the Cubs could no have been outs. in that game. Yeah, I know. The, their, their bullpen tried blowing it. The Cubs just said, here's the game. We'll just strike out yeah. back to back to back with the bases loaded. Yeah. Um, But a three and three homestand, look, you did what you had to do versus the Brewers. Tied for first. You're not, it, it's, pro, it's hard to sweep any team in the major leagues, but you have to take you have to take advantage of beating teams in your division if you want to win your division and that's the first time look i don't think the cubs have played another divisional opponent no, yet no so you have to win those games and that's just the new mlb all right people are saying well we wanted we wanted to see change so they changed it to where you play every team in the mlb well that means you play less division games so you go from playing the cardinals it used to be 19 times. Four or five times a year, and now you play them three series. So one year you're going to get them at home twice, and you're going to go there once, and then vice versa the next year. You're, you know what I mean? It's not You're not going to have as many divisional games. Like I think the Cubs only play in Cincinnati once this year, and I think we get them at home twice. or so, It's something like that. Yeah, I get what you're saying. You have to win. You have got to win your divisional games. Yeah. So, as, as everyone knows, our bullpen has been absolutely yeah. atrocious. Uh, really quick, I'd like to put up this next slide here. Um, I want Jake especially to speak first on it. I'd like to I'd like to see his reaction. And uh, we're, we're going to talk a little bit about Adbert Alzelay. Here's Adbert. Let me get a picture of him up here. Yeah. Just an absolute stud. Take a look at that guy right there in the middle. Just take a look hey, at that. Look at that blue glove. Yeah, listen to this. <laughs> Listen to listen to this. They got a game in the future where it's his bobblehead day. <laughs> what if he's not even on the team? What do you do? They'll cancel it. Well, yeah, and then what? There ain't just they're gonna be no promotion that day. They'll give out a hat or something. Jake, if you were going to that game, would what would you do if you got his bobblehead? I would give it to a kid. Oh, what a nice guy. What a gentleman. I wouldn't want it. Look, 
this whole summer or this whole off season, you heard Albert Ellsway on Twitter, play the damn song. He can't wait to, he can't wait to get out on the mound. He can't wait to, and then he just shits down his pants. <laughs> Literally, that's what he does. He comes out there. His velocity is gone. He throws way too many breaking balls right over the heart. Of, you, you know what? You know what irritates me most about this, about this dude, when he's up 0-2 in the count, or 1-2 in the count. He grew so many hittable pitches when he's up in the count. It's remarkable. And then they get hit. It's like a beating a dead cow. Like, what do you like? You got it. You can't throw a breaking ball in the dirt, bounce it in. I don't care. Throw it over his head. Make it. Try to make the batter get himself out. Too many times he gets beat middle middle when he's up in the count. And I think the I think Council, I think he is finally he. I think he had enough of it. Had enough, hasn't he? Blown what he blow six games so far this year. I know he's blown five for sure. Six. There was a point where he had another, more blown saves than Shota had walks. There was another game that he came in in the eighth and blew it. Opening day, it was all right, whatever. That guy hadn't hit a homer that his guy, whole MLB career. Th- that, that, he's got like one two, other got, homer? No, he's got like 11 home runs and 10 MLB seasons. Okay. So, <laughs> so but, but still, he, he was off the bench, too. He hadn't played the whole game. You probably can't give up a home run to that guy. Was it Travis Janikowski? Yeah, I think so. Is that who it was? So you, you knew then that right there, that was Elsloy at the end of last year. Remember? He was getting shaky towards the end of the last season. He was getting lucky because he was, again, middle-middle on a lot of stuff. His velocity seems to be down. David Kaplan can't stand him either. I love watching his recaps of the games. They – this bullpen, this bullpen. What about heart attack Hector? It's hard to say anything bad about him because he seems to find a way to get it done. Even though he scares the shit out of you. I don't know if he there. pitches better under pressure because the dude's going to walk a batter every time he's out there. I think he's done it almost Typically every the time first he's been batter. out there. Yeah. So, and then all of a sudden he starts to, to figure it out. I don't know if that's who he is. I don't really know. Hector Neris that much. He was on the Phillies, wasn't he, one year? Well, he came from the Astros. Yeah. He, I mean, I don't think that that can be your guy the whole year. Well, we don't really have anybody else right now. I get that, and I get that's why he is, but I hear the Cubs are talking to Miami. That guy ain't worth the shit either. Who? I don't even know his name, but I've seen his stats. I mean, his walk to – But he might not – he might I mean, just be a bullpen guy. He might not. He might not be their closer. Yeah, but I mean, this guy walks a guy in the inning too. I mean, he ain't nothing great. So, Have you heard anything else about us bringing up any other guys from the minors? Well, I think what's his name will be coming up. Cade Horton. He'll 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 he'll, he'll come up at some time this year. I would say probably July. Yeah. There's either a- before All Star break to see what he's got. Why do they wait so long? Well, I don't know. Drew Drew can probably answer that for you. He seems to know a lot about the minors. Yeah, seems like. I mean, if they're not ready, I mean, like you seem kind of. I think the whole hype of like Jackson Holiday, he was rushed a little bit because I mean he flew through every level. Well, what do you think about? And he comes up and went like what one for thirty, and then they sent him back down, and he's hitting two hundred in AAA. Matt Mervis is hitting fine in AAA. David Bodie's hitting fine. I think Matt Mervis is just kind of a look at David Bodie, almost like a a four A player. Yeah, I'm not. Like, I, you know he's, what? I'm, he's good for AAA, but he's not good I, for the majors. And you can't say they didn't give Matt Mervis a chance. I mean, they did, but well, they how did, how, how long did, can you but, keep him in a lineup? Yeah. But, I mean, how, well, how that's yeah. that's like if we're kind of like competing right now, though. I'm saying like like if the Cubs sucked and you let that kid play every day, sure, he, he might, might he better. might yeah. But PCA but has shown winning. you flashes. I think that you so. wish think, Matt Mervis would have. I think PCA deserves a spot on that team. Don't you? But do you see what I'm saying? Why can't PCA show new flashes that you wish Mervis would have showed you? Yeah. You know he's not going to – he's not an A-plus defender. That's whatever. Mervis? Yeah, but at the plate, the dude – His at-bats were just pathetic. Yeah, his like, at-bat. That's what I'm saying. Like, I don't care. If you if you strike out a lot, I mean, that's kind of the new baseball, but it's like he just looked lost. Oh, Matt like some Mervis. Of, some of his swings – Matt Mervis looked some of his like swings, he didn't belong. He just looked like he was in fucking Lala. Uh, yeah, I think, and you just thought he was up because they were hurt. 
What That's happened? What happened to Canario? I don't know if any. They I just think he down. got sent. He just got sent down because the day, they got healthy. But wh- I mean, is it time? Could we bring David Vody back up for like a no. Nick Madrigal? No. Like you'd rather have Madrigal? Yes. Bodie's not even on the forty man. They're not putting him back on it. Bodie's done. What he happened did, to him? He sucks. He had some clutch moments in the he, regular he had season. One clutch moment. <laughs> and fun, fun, well, fun, fun fact: his wife had a baby nine years to the date after that Grand Slam. Well, <laughs> how do you know that? Let me I just tell you, Twitter. I can't fucking stand Nick Madrick on. I'd rather have David yeah. Bodie in the lineup. He makes a little bit more contact, I'd say, than Bodie. Oh, he's a ground ball to third base waiting to happen and beat out a double play. Oh, he can put the ball on play. Well, he's Yay. he's a better he's a better defender than Bodie. He'd be a better he's a better third baseman. He can play second base. I mean I, Nick Madrigal isn't somebody I want on my I don't team. want him either, but he's better than David Bodie. What about your guy Matt Shaw? He'll be up. When? I don't know, maybe late this year. Well, if he can play short, can he play third? I, I think the Mason Miller hype third. to Chicago, I think, is not going to happen. No. I think they won't. They'll want too much. Yeah. I think, and I and I'm not pulling another bullshit deal where we get rid of someone because the worst trade in Chicago Cubs history is getting rid of Dylan Cease for for fucking Jose Quintana, yeah. the most <laughs> average pitcher in the major leagues. <laughs> Ask Frank the Tank what he thinks about Jose Quintana. I think the um. Fuck, I lost it. I don't think we need another. We don't. We we need a bunch of guys in the pen, but it's like I don't really want to give up too many guys. I I think in the you're going to have to give somebody up if you want a decent bullpen arm. The guy from Cleveland, uh, Classe, he ain't coming. They're great. I know. know, That's what I'm saying. He was on the way. What about the guy on the A's? Isn't that guy a stud? That's that's what what we were just talking about. He throws 100 fucking five miles an hour. But the Cleveland, I mean, last year they, I think they. Heard some offers, but they're, I mean, they got the best record. Unless in Cleveland League, goes on a 10 or 15 game losing streak where they're 500 at the All Star break, they're not getting rid of him no. because they'd be stupid and their fan base would riot. Do you think Happ even plays next year on the Cubs? Yeah. Like when think, you look at the minor league system and how many outfielders the Cubs have I that think, are like top prospects. Well, I think Ian Happ's track record says he's going to get on track. Well, was he so, that great last year? Just he wasn't this walk. bad. I mean, say what you want, but who are you going to put out in left field? You don't think you don't think Pete Crow could play left field? No. Maybe, if you I can mean, play maybe. center, you can't play left. You've ever seen a lefty play left field? Well, I don't know. <laughs> All I'm saying about Ian Happ is I get – Ian he, Happ he, plays both ways. He hits both ways. That's what I meant. He, he doesn't throw, throw both left. ways. Ian Happ – I just I think he's going to get a little bit more consistent once this lineup gets once he once Ian Happ gets a spot and he's not bat three. First off, him being a three hitter, who the fuck ever <laughs> made this decision for going back to last year with David Loss as your head coach, batting Ian Happ third. Same with Craig Council I don't this think year. He really had a choice though in that situation. Who with hitting him third with where we were at with injuries. Well, put anybody else there, but someone who was batting 180 in the last three weeks. Yeah, try but, it. Okay, yeah, but he also has. I'm not sticking up for him because I kind of hate him. But I'm and, not saying take him out of no, the lineup. I know, I know, but he he is one of the best on base percentages on the team. And you want Horner leading? Who's going to hit third? Morell? I mean, Morell was playing like shit. He's picked so it up this, now. This last is what week. I don't. This oh. is this is what irritates me about baseball. I understand you want people to be. You want they want the consistency, right? These guys want to know where they're batting, they want to know where they're gonna play. But Nico Horner is your best guy to hit the ball. I just don't get why Nico I don't know that I like Nico Horner at leadoff. And I'll say this because he gets on a lot and he hits the ball a lot. So wouldn't you think you'd want him on? Wouldn't you want him up with Brunners on? Who's gonna get on before him? Tachman, I mean, couldn't you bat Nico fifth to where maybe fifth. He, if you want him to be your RBI guy, especially with those guys injured, why would you have him all the way down at five? I see your argument because I even brought it up one time. Well, said, he's why not would... going to bat four. He's not a power hitter. I know, they I would brought, never think that. I, I get that. I brought it up. I was thinking, like, why wouldn't 
I th- I wouldn't. Where do could it. you put him to get? To, I'm trying. I was trying to say like I wouldn't do it, but like, I mean, I thought maybe third, but he. I don't think he's not a typical three hitter, and it don't make any sense. And I just yeah, there's just he's never gonna. I get it. It just sucks because the way Nico Horn, how Luis arises for the team. That's how. That's our Nico Horner. Yeah, the guy you want up, the guy that's gonna hit the ball. He's gonna make contact, and he plays great. I think defense. he belongs at leadoff because I mean who. Especially once we get healthy, I mean, you couldn't bet, wouldn't you? Would you trust Hackman? I mean, you could. What, you, and you what could, about Hap? You could do what you just said with betting Nico fifth. The only way I could see that is if you're fully healthy, you could lead off Talkman, go, to, go Suzuki, Belly, Morell, uh, Nico, Hap like six or seven. You could plug Bush in there. And another thing is, is if Ian you Hap. move, if Ian you Hap move Hap, worthless. okay. So if you move Hap down eight or nine. And you have Nico leading off. Well, there's where other people will say, well, if the bottom of the order gets on, well, then Nico can hit them in. But you can't play the what if game because if they don't get on, then Nico's just leading off another inning and he doesn't get to do no damage. But the only thing that goes up for him is his OBP. Yeah, but um, yeah, he never gets any. The stats. difficult thing with setting up a lineup, though, is I mean, you want it well structured and you want it stre- spread out enough to where you got like a five hitter. Is almost I always think kind of like a second kind of a leadoff because like right. they call the four hitter the cleanup hitter. I yeah. mean the five hitter can kind of start the line again. Again, but it's like what? Who do you trust? You, you if you bat leadoff, typically you only lead off the first inning. Typically, I mean you might lead off the sixth or seventh. I mean who knows? But t- I just typically hate, you lead off one time. I just hate that Nico is up always at the wrong time. Except for that one game versus the Brewers where he hit that ball in the gap. And that was because the bottom of the lineup got on. But that don't happen a lot. Who do you trust when the lineup's healthy to put the ball in play and to maybe get it? Not just put the ball in play. I I think it's Nico Horner. I think he's the best all-around baseball player on that team. I'd say Horner and Sayo. Yeah. Horner plays defense. He can run and he can hit. Give me another player on the team that can do all three of those things. At an elite, at an elite Cody. level, Cody Bellinger can't steal at an elite level. What? How many bases has Nico taken this year? At the end of the year, Nico will have the most stolen bases on the team unless PCA stays up. Yeah, Nico Horner is the best all-around baseball player in the country, and that's fine. I don't disagree at all. He's not the best. Well, I think he's the best player on the Cubs. I agree. He's just not your. He's the best player in the Cubs, but he ain't. He, he's not getting the deal. They got him in a bargain last he's year. He's just not your player. He, he's like your your players from other teams that people hear about are Saya and Cody and Dansby, and that's because well they got paid that money. They're supposed to drive in runs. Nico's not supposed to drive in runs. It irritates me that he's not because he's the motherfucker that puts the ball in play. That's because he's the one that's got to get on. Like he has three hit games. And he has no RBI. Because Cody Bellinger sometimes strikes out. I get that. You're going to have that with your power hitters. But I just – that's just how baseball is, and I'm sure it's not going to change. But I don't see why you couldn't tinker with it with your with how good the Cubs have started. I mean – They're all going to bat. It's not like you're taking anybody out of the lineup. All you're doing is switching it I could have seen it when they were injured, but now that they're going to be fully healthy by the end of this week. I think it, I think everybody – yeah, you're right. I think – Bellinger should bat third every single game. I think I think Friday at Friday at five forty, Say will be in that lineup. I agree. And you'll have a healthy Cubs. Now where's Say gonna bat four or two? I'd say two. So you have your best. Yeah, I, don't like, well, that's why? Your, I don't like that. Your top three hitters get to bat the first. I don't like Say it two. I'd, I'd say two or four. It all depends on what they want why to do. Can't it you all do depends do on like what they want to do. Top man and half. They get on base. They walk. And when Hap Hap has a good on base percentage, I know I just. I'd said rather that. have Hap lead off because I feel like he's fucking. He's eligible not, to ground into a double not, play. You do not want him at the top of your lineup. No, I don't want Ian Hap leading off. I don't want him fucking anywhere near the top of the lineup. I'd bet him seven. But I don't like say a second because he's going to drive in no runs. Not necessarily. You get Nico on. If then you're asking Nico to steal, potentially run. I I think say a three, I, belly four, morel five is is what I really like. Don't bet. Bellinger fourth because we ran into that problem last year and everybody called Ross an idiot for it. You yeah, want your best. Wasn't... You want your best hitter batting third. God, but I don't like say. But say it might be your then best bet, hitter. Then bet say a four and move Morel down to five. That's and fine. You could go Horner, Talkman, Belly. I like that a lot. Say a 
For real. That's what that that's that's what I like. But the you only know. thing about Nico batting leadoff is Nico doesn't get walked a lot. Nico's gonna Nico's gonna get out a lot, but Nico's also there's also gonna be one out starting the game a lot. Is the word Tachman? I feel Tachman's in a three-two count, like Chris Bryant was in 2016. Yeah. Every fucking time he's up to bat, I feel there's a three-two count. So could you go Tachman Horner? No, I don't know. You could. There's so many different. They're, they're all going to be in the could, lineup, and could, it's good. You could, but why the Cubs. So. The Cubs are going to go as far as the top five of their lineup takes them. Well, that's a, about every team. Well, I mean, after that, I mean, Dansby can't hit worth the shit. That's going to come. Ian around. can't hit worth the shit. Daniel, Dansby had a pretty rough offensive year last year. Yeah, so. I, Dansby's been playing banged up for the last week. Of course, they say that. Well, well, everybody's hurt, and they said Kyle Hendricks was at hurt. least he's not a bum, and he's playing. I know, but you got and it, he's flashing the leather. His knee hurts doesn't mean he's swinging at fucking garbage pitches, which has nothing to do with your fucking. I'm knee. just saying in June. <laughs> and then you got Ian Happ in left field who fucking posts in, on social media you're drinking his fucking fancy coffee. It's like, hit fuck the ball. off, dude. Hit the fucking ball. In June, when these guys are hitting and they've come around, just remember I said that they'll come around. They they will. I think they what are your will. thoughts on? Uh, do, you, do you think Bush is going to start coming around again? It's too early to tell. I'd leave, he, I'd leave him where look, he's at. He smoked the fuck out of that Well, pitch yeah, <laughs> and I get it, and everyone's going to be crazy about it for the next week or two, but he still is success. I can't say the word. Successful? Were you trying to no, say that? No, he's too prone to swing at the high pitch that annoys me. I know, but that's really been kind of just a past, past week struggle, really. He's been struggling for longer than a week. I know, but, like, really struggling, which I was very surprised to get that home run. Because he's been like the game we, me and Cole went to the game on Sunday. Yeah, he struck out what? He struck out four times. Nine, oh, for four, yeah. four Ks. Yeah, you can't do that. And that's, that's the golden three sombrero. Of, three of them. Isn't that the golden sombrero? Yeah. The, what's five? five? I was at a game where Ian Hampshire struck three out five of, times. Three of them were fucking horseshit pitches. One of them, I, I think. I, just I'm just it. not. The only thing about Bush is the only thing I've seen from him is that he can hit the home run ball, he doesn't get on base a lot. He plays a horrible first base. Not really. It's gotten better. Huh. It's gotten better. I've seen some pathetic plays I've at first seen some from the Cubs. Pathetic balls this year. at first that the dude needs to knock down. Know, like it's, if it's a one hopper, like I just remember watching Rizzo and Rizzo fucking scooped I everything know, over there. But remember, the kid's a rookie. And what option? What he's other? Twenty six. Op- he's a rookie though. And what other? Fo- what other option at this point in time besides keeping PCA in the outfield, moving belly to first? Which I don't know if they're ready to do that yet. They should what be ready option? to do that. Why? Why I agree they should. But what other option? If they're not going to do that, what other option do they have? Wisdom. Wisdom. Come on. Go back to your fucking Twitter and scroll down to about <laughs> last July and read all the shit you said about him and tell me that again. Tell me I'm not right. Tell me I was wrong about Patrick Wisdom and, and shit talking him. I mean, he's been a little better this year, but I mean, he doesn't play a shit ton. He hardly plays. Yeah. I. I would the not why, why why would you want Patrick Wisdom at first base over a rookie who can I think can only get better. If it don't work out, it don't work out. Because if it don't work out, yeah, if they, it don't they if, don't have another option. If it don't work out, so what? They that's don't. when if you want to then they'll be even more. That's why he was belly. playing so much because they didn't have another op, they did not have no other option. Going forward, because I want to see uh, is terrible. Going forward, I want to see PCA though playing. A lot more than I want. PCA to see. should not go back down to. Well, I'm not saying that. At I'm all not saying year. that. But when say and Cody come back, aren't they gonna? No. What are you gonna do? Make somebody DH and no, PCA still plays? You're gonna play happen left, Dolly at first, PCA in Sorry. center, and 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 Bush say and right. right. So Bush is just DH. Bush is DH Bush and sit the bench. I would, I would DH Talkman more than Bush. Because you can't. You just forgot Talkman. That's what right. Name that. Fuck. That's, the, the Cubs have a good problem when they're healthy. Talkman's got a Someone bat is going to be on the bench that's a pretty good bat. But there's nothing wrong with that. Back in the day, like 15 years ago, you had a stud coming off in the eighth or ninth to pinch hit. And you were like, whoa, and we got to get this guy out. And, he's, and they, were, they were home run hitters, a lot of them. That's fine. They need to have somebody like that off the bench, right? Yeah. You huh. can't just have guys like Nicky fucking two bags, Madrigal. <laughs> Who is the worst base runner on the team? The worst base runner I've ever seen. You need a late late game threat. I mean, or yeah, and Bush, and Bush is a late game threat. It's I mean, kind of something you don't expect. Like, kind of off topic, but but I'll, I'll never forget this. I was pitching in a fucking travel ball game when I was like probably like fourteen. And I was cruising. 
and for some reason you batted they batted more than nine because I think it was just like the round robin part of the tournament. And they bring this kid up. He's batting, I think, 12 out of 12. This kid doesn't – he has a fucking wrong jersey on. And he hits a dong off you? I just – I'm like, all right, this ain't going to be too hard. This kid fucking sent one. <laughs> I mean, he was the best hitter on the fucking team. Yeah, well, that, I mean – That was a good a story. I like that I mean, story, this kid Drew. was, like, fucking good. A weapon that you didn't know about. Like, <laughs> Wear the fucking wrong jersey it yeah, takes wasn't even deep. wearing the right jersey, batting last. I'm like, oh. Smokes it. Um, Drew giving up a homer. Fuck you. <laughs> so going forward, we got the Pirates and the Braves on our little six-game road trip here. Jake, how do you think they'll fare in Pittsburgh this I weekend? I don't know. It's going to be tough. They got J- – what's his name tomorrow? Starts with the J. Um, Click it. Oh, for fuck's sakes. They got a good pitcher is. tomorrow. So, and Jay Saturday. Jones. Yep. Thought so. I think it's – He's got a 2.63 ERA, so pretty good. And then you and you face Paul. Um, Paul Skeens, who throws absolute gas. All right, well, look, the majors is a different story. I know, but if you watch him in that college now, World series, I see he is fucking coming nuts. into he is coming in to face a Cubs team that is right now we would say feeble at the plate. If I hit a home run off him, I'd blow Olivia a kiss and I'm running the bases. Wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. Ideally, I ideally you want to win the series, but look, the Cubs have a brutal month month of May. You play the Pirates six times. You play the their next twelve games are versus the Pirates and Braves, home and away, home and away. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, if you go six and six in that stretch, yeah. I mean, you have to come away with thinking that's not bad. But what's I know I think six and six would leave you at still six games over five hundred, right? When you're yeah, done. But I think I mean I think Paul Skeens is gonna be really good, but it's like people seemed a lot more like psyched out about it, it looks like. I mean at the end of the day So you think the Cubs are gonna get to him. But at the end of the day, it's his I I don't care if he he's gonna be really good, in my opinion. But it's his MLB debut. He's not what about Strasburg's debut? Okay, but look at a lot of MLB debuts. They're not that great. Drew's got a point. I'm, the, I I I, I wouldn't never be surprised once, if he goes four innings and gives up eight runs. Well, I wouldn't. And I shock also me. wouldn't be surprised yeah. if he goes six two six six shutout and gives up two hits. Strikes out a lot. Look, yeah, strikes out about eleven of us people. Fox. <laughs> the hundred the, mile an hour. The NL Central zone. has become what we thought the NL Central was going to become. It is a weak division. It is. We have kind three of. teams that are seven games under five hundred. Who? The Cardinals are now six or seven games. What's their record? Uh, fifteen and twenty-one. So, so five and six in Pittsburgh. If the Cubs take care of Pittsburgh, three teams will be six or five or six games under five hundred. Yeah. This is a weak division. Well, if you yeah, look, I didn't actually, realize how bad of a week the Reds had. Look, the at, Reds were right there. Like, the Reds the lost eight in a row. Yeah, eight in a row. Cardinals lost four in a row. Pirates lost two in a row. Everybody's on a losing the streak Cardinals in this suck. division. And then, like in the last ten, as bad as we think maybe the Cubs have kind of been lately, they're probably or like five mediocre. And five. Yeah, they're five and five, and they're actually the best in the last ten of we all, all the teams. We all freak out, and I'm probably the worst at it. We ask them to f- stay afloat, and five and five is staying afloat. It really didn't blow many home game, many games on the home stand, right? No, they just blew one. The, the one game, the one nothing game. Who pitches tomorrow for us, Jake? Tomorrow, Tyone. Okay, yeah. so how do you feel? I mean, we you got a sad talent, Talion, and uh, it'll be and fun. Justin Steele this weekend. Well, you have I to, mean, that's pretty. No, I thought just oh, it, it says he, Steele right he, there. It, will Imanaga pitch game one in Atlanta then? Yeah, yeah it says Shota. So against so, our Lope, who's our Lopez on the fucking Braves? I don't know, but He's got a hell of an ERA too. Fucking god damn it, they don't ever get a break. And then when we do get a break, we don't. And then they got to play Chris Sale. Chris Sale. Half, they, cool. they have Chris Sale. You're fucking weak down the line. Half these probables are going to change. Okay, I was just, sorry. I was just looking. Okay, so anyways, we have Tyone, Assad, and Steele. Pretty good. Two and one. I hope so. Two and one. You, you probably got to look at this when you look at their lineup, and you probably got to go. Well, the Cubs need to sweep them. Let's let's put up or shut up. They're better than Pittsburgh. They are who they thought we they are who we thought they were. As the same with the Reds. I told everybody about yeah. the fucking Cincinnati Reds. Here they are again in a down roll, 
in a down roll spiral. Yeah, but I fucking told everybody going, about the Reds. They do it every year. Actually, they were pretty decent last year. Yeah, they were. Pro- I, I bet on them to make the they playoffs were one game last the year. Cubs. Yeah, fucking De La Cruz is a so stud. So does that mean they were four games over if we were five or six? Yeah. You, that's an okay team. I mean, I know they just lost eight in a row, but I mean, it's it's May. I mean, they could end up. Did, they're many, not going to be a playoff team, but I mean, they could be right around five hundred. Didn't they win like thirteen games in a row last year? They got really hot. Last I just, year I for just a think, I just think they are who we. I told you they would be at the end, of the beginning of the year. I told you it would be the Cubs and Brewers. Drew, I mean, Drew's got a bit of a soft spot for the Reds. They do have a really nice stadium, he said. Oh, I agree with him. Form, He's kind of got a soft spot for but the But we hear this every year about the Cincinnati Reds for the last 10 years. Who gives a fuck? It's the Reds. Maybe they not the haven't last 10 made years. the playoffs. They were got no, off every year, years. it's the Reds. Everyone's like, look out. It's Joey Votto at first. <laughs> They've got all these good guys. <laughs> Ella De La Cruz. Now look at the guy. He's De La Cruz. Oh, he's not a bum, he's dude. Bum. He's not a bum. bum. You would you you take Dansby over De La Cruz at short? Maybe defensively, not at the plate. De La Cruz reminds me of a Baez. They make flashy. <laughs> he's a plays. better Baez. A little bit, but they make flashy plays, and that's why they get shown. Give me Dansby, who's going to have fifteen errors all year instead of thirty-five. Give me De La Cruz. He's younger. I don't know about he's younger, me the cheaper, Maybe. a better bat. I don't know. Anyways, uh, I don't really have anything else to add. If you guys got anything else, you can say some final thoughts. I think if they let's go three and three. Yeah, I mean, I don't. Can really, we go three and three? I don't really expect you to sweep Pittsburgh. I mean, it's MLB and you're on the road. They're all professional baseball teams. You'd like to take Maybe two. Maybe it could be the, it, the could, it, could, it could be the Dodgers playing the White Sox, and they. they Maybe you get Amanaga to. Maybe you win game one of Atlanta. Maybe I mean who 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 who's their who's their game two and three starters lined up to be right now versus I just Atlanta. You. Well, if it's Imanaga, it'd be Wesnecki and uh, turns Talion. around to Tyone. Yeah. yeah, but he, which I got to give it to Tyone. He's been yeah, phenomenal so Jamal, far this look, year, and he was terrible last was year. Terrible I was giving him a lot of year, shit last he, year, but no, but he got better. Yeah. And that's what we needed to see. Now, fuck Jamo's on what he's unhittable since he's came back. Yeah, he's been great. I would just, I don't know. I think, I mean. If the Cubs don't make the playoffs with the fucking best starting rotation in baseball, it's yeah, absolutely Yeah, but Cole, pathetic. it's only the best starting rotation for the first, for the last three or four weeks. I'm just saying, Let's if it continues, if, if can, it continues. Yeah, if it continues, they have the best four-headed monster in the league. The thing I'm curious to see with Imanaga is, I mean, he's been great and, like really good, but like, like the game we went to opening day, some of them flyouts he had. And when yeah, it, when, it, when it gets August, to eighty degrees out in July, out of some here. of them balls are going to be fucking sailing in the bleachers. Yeah, but the thing about it is, is it was hot when he pitched versus San Diego. Yeah, it was seventy three degrees. Yeah, that's how it's probably going to be a lot in the summer. Maybe eighty. A couple nineties. You'll have a couple. Yeah, a couple, days. but that's not many. Games. Yeah, I mean, it don't matter how good he would pitch against Atlanta. It really, I mean, it does. But I mean, if he say gives up one run in six innings, are we even going to score a run? And if we have two or three runs, I think this is the offense going to blow. I, it? I think this offense gets out of the funk. I think they start having major league at bats and putting the ball in play again. Which good things happen when you put the ball in play a lot. I th- they, they can't stay this bad. They can. Either way, I've I've liked what I've seen so far from the Cubs this year, and hopefully we get to watch them into the playoffs this year. And you never well, know Chicago what could, you never know. Not, what the happen. last Chicago playoff win was the 2017 Cubs win. They beat series the series Washington win Nationals. series or, series win or game win series just okay. any playoff win. Oh no playoff shit! Win or they didn't series. win anything since then. A win or a series. The last Chicago playoff win for any team to win a game or to win a whole playoff series to win a whole playoff series okay. was the 2017 Cubs. Okay. Because yeah, the fucking White Sox beat the Astros in what 2021. Yeah. They won Game Three. The Bulls technically won a playing game this year. We ain't counting that bullshit. I thought it was the postseason on Twitter. Remember? <laughs> it is the postseason, but I, I've had arguments with people. They say that's not the postseason. Well, but you I, I to think, go get oh, my I rally think, rack. I think it is. Oh, oh, oh Jesus. See red, everybody. See red. Jake, diehard Bulls fan over here for aging DeMar DeRozan. No, never plays Lonzo Ball. This is what this is what the fucking organization gave me. <laughs> what does that say? See red, twenty four postseason. Thank you. Okay, so that was a playoff win, but I'm not counting it. 
I'm with you guys. Yeah, but I'm just telling shit. you that's what they gave me. Then they got smoked after that. So what a waste of money. Shut up. <laughs> um, we're gonna be doing a podcast soon about the University of Illinois. Are we? Yes. Brad Underwood has taken the portal by storm. It will be ranked top 15 to start the season. And if you doubt Underwood and you doubt Illinois again, don't be there next year when they're winning in the Big Ten again. And they're I don't think anybody tournament. was doubting Underwood this year. Oh, you both had your doubts. And now All I'm saying is I don't it, care who it, anybody is. It would be very gets. hard to not have your doubts about them before, and once before they the get, season. And once they get this Igor, whatever his name is, from overseas, oh, and they have the number one best portal – Portal ranking, yep, Underwood. And and you can say all you want that it's Antigua. He wouldn't come if he didn't want to coach with Underwood. I know. I could give. I'm two just st- saying. What, how do, how could you not before this past season? How could you not have doubts about Underwood before this past season where we went to the Elite Eight? How could you not? I mean, they were winning. Yeah, I know, but they didn't. Yeah, I know, but they were winning. Yes, but they didn't. I mean. I mean, sure, you want postseason success. It's an irrelevant conversation because yeah. I got over the hump, but it was no. You want postseasons. It's not irrelevant. You're right. You want postseason success, but in order to get to the postseason, you have to have regular season success. Yeah. I don't know. I like what they did with their non-conference, though. Oh, they they, uh, they just another game They're playing Tennessee, Alabama, Duke, and Missouri. I hope. Yeah, then you'll get Missouri again. Um, that's brutal. That's probably one of the hardest mm-hmm. non-conference schedules in all of basketball. Missouri will be a little bit better. This and you're going to see Indiana have play nobody yeah. again. Their non-conference will be a I fucking think, dud. I think Missouri's portal is like right next to Illinois. Yeah. I would love to kick the fuck out of them again. Well, I'm just telling you, they're back. They're here to stay. And I think they're going to pay this guy 1.3 mil, north of a mil. I'll tell you what, I think UConn is going to win the national championship again next year. I don't give a fuck who's on their team. I agree. If they run that offense, they're going to beat everybody. Yeah. Seriously. You that's the best have offense. The players. Dude, it, he's going to get talented players. They just won back to back national championships. But I'm telling you, if you watch their offense, Jake, yeah, I the, watched. Nobody, nobody can stop that offense. I watched offense. the 30 nothing run. Nobody's going to stop that. Offense. Yeah. It was terrible. I, I, I Yeah, I would bet my lot. Maybe not my life savings, but I'd bet a good amount on UConn next year. They'll be back. So, everybody, uh, we'll be back soon, and have a good rest of your week.